as you can see, I'm wearing a DZO film hat. So this is what the video is about. Today we're gonna to talk about cinema lenses. And in fact, your first set of cinema lenses. When people wanna shed themselves of the shackles that is autofocus, cinema lenses are the next logical step. Now, I get asked a ton of times which cinema lenses to start off with. Now, typically I try not to answer this question because I don't like telling people directly what to buy. But because of this brand new price point for a limited time, I'm gonna tell you about the DZO educational set to give you the coverage that you need out of the focal lengths and as well as one of the most used cinema lens brands that I've ever actually used. I've done more than one video on these these little lenses and I've done one of the one project on them as well. So everything I'm gonna say about the character and how it looks, pretty consistent. However, we are gonna talk about the 16 to 25 and the 35 to 80 Cata Ace zoom lens as a way of talking about your first cinema lens set, especially because of this price. That's only limited time, but well, we'll get there. Now, when looking at cinema lenses, we're gonna set a couple of expectations, especially this is going to be your first kit. First thing is that if you're expecting autofocus, well, don't. A lot of cinema lenses don't actually have autofocus with it. Now, there is the DJI Focus Pro, which is another video for another time, but on its own, cinema lenses have a manual aperture, a manual zoom, and a manual iris as well. But for the most part, cinema lenses do have a manual aperture, a manual focus, and a manual zoom whenever it's applicable. These are generally going to be dials with little teeth on them so you can put on motors to them, which gives you the ability to have manual control over all the aspects that you would expect from a lens. Now with cinema lenses, you are gonna be looking at a matching set. Typically when you're buying cinema lenses, you, typically when you're buying a cinema lens, it's kind of like lace chips. It's just irresponsible to only have one. In most cases, you're probably looking at two, three, four plus lenses for a couple of different reasons. For one, generally speaking, a lot of the sizes of these lenses are going to be very similar. So that way, if you have a balanced rig or you're using for gimbal operation, lenses are going to be around the same size, which is gonna go into the DZO Vespid Primes. These are gonna be the prime lens that they came out with in 2019, and I've actually used these lenses quite a bit since. Now, having matching sizes also means you're gonna have matching filter threads. That way, it's gonna be a little bit easier if you have screw-on filters or you're adapting it to a matte box. Across the board for most of the Vespa Primes, you're gonna be dealing with a 77 millimeter filter thread, except for one lens, which has a little bit of a twist in that 16 millimeter, which we're going to get into at the second lens of this video. Now, overall, that sounds fine and good, but the real reason why a lot of people gravitate towards cinema lenses versus their photography lenses is going to be the inherent characteristics that you're going to get out of each cinema lens. Cinema lenses, for the most part, are going to have different coatings on their glass in order to create certain types of look. Maybe skin tones look a certain way, or maybe highlight fallout between the brighter and the darker parts of your image are going to be a little bit different or a bit smoother. Or you wanna make sure that that focus throw, which is gonna be a little bit longer, which is nice to dial in your focus on cinema lenses, everything else on that glass is going to be clean. Each lens is going to have certain characteristics and across different brands, the look are gonna be consistent as well, which is a reason why you're gonna look at sets. The 16 to 25 and that Cata A zoom are gonna have similar characteristics, albeit they're gonna be different focal lengths. So I'm gonna start off with the basics. This is gonna be the 25 millimeter Vespa Prime. This is one of the lenses in the kit, but the 25 millimeter focal length is one of the safest that you wanna have in your kit. It's not too wide, but at the same time, it's definitely not a tight lens at all. 24 or 25 millimeters is great for establishing shots or getting medium close-ups or medium shots. Or if you wanna get some interesting perspectives, you can use a 25 millimeter to get in tight and also keep some of your background at the same time. Now what's nice about these guys is that the standard build of this Vespa Prime is gonna be pretty consistent amongst other Vespa Prime lenses. The 35 looks very similar, so does the 40, the 50, and everything else in this kind of Vespa Prime form factor. It's a 77 millimeter filter thread, which is super nice because you can use circular filters on it, and also 77 millimeters is adaptable to some of the matte boxes that are available if you have one and you wanna put filters on them as well. One thing I like about the Vespa Primes and this DZO set is the fact that you're going to have a PL mount. Now, PL mount is going to be pretty common amongst bigger cinema cameras, which means that that workflow is going to be a bit easier and as well as most camera mounts can mount onto a PL. Now, if you prefer to use EF, they actually have EF mounts in this set as well, but personally for me, I would like using the PL, and all three lenses in this kit are going to have these guys. And as you upgrade it to different cinema cameras, you don't have to worry about changing out the mount, you just have to change the adapter and you can keep everything the same. In terms of the character and the look and feel of these lenses, I'm just gonna leave a list of all the videos I've done with DZO Vespa Primes in the description down below because exactly what I'm gonna say with these guys are exactly what I'm gonna say in pretty much every video that I've made with DZO Vespa Primes before and I just be a broken record. It's gonna have a nice highlight roll off. They're not incredibly sharp, but they're also not vintage lenses as well. They strike somewhere in between. They do have a little bit of a warmer greenish tint to them, which actually is something I don't mind a lot as that kind of goes my shooting style and how I color grade things. And the 25 millimeter is no different than the other Vespa Primes that I've used. 
Now, there is one Vespid Prime that is different than ones that I've used before, and it has a little bit of a caveat because we were talking about that front filter thing. So we'll just talk about the 16. Now we're gonna be talking about the 16 millimeter Vespid Prime. Now this guy is a little bit different than the 25 from a physical standpoint, but in terms of characteristics, it's pretty similar to the other Vespid Primes in the set. Now 16 millimeters is gonna be pretty much the widest you're going to go when you're starting out, unless you get something like a 10, a 12, or 14, which is gonna be separate from the educational set. With 16 millimeters, it's gonna be great for establishing shots as it is able to capture a lot of the background because it's such a wide focal length. However, there's a little bit of a plot twist that you can use, which I've also used as well. Now with the 16 millimeter, you have a minimum focusing distance of close to about a foot. Now what you can do with that is you can actually move your subject closer to the front of the lens, and which not only gives you the full length and width of somebody's face, but at the same time, because it's a wider focal angle lens, you're still gonna get a lot of the background because it's so wide. This is something that you don't necessarily wanna use all the time, but it does come in handy to make interesting shots, which I've done in a couple of different things, especially in music videos. Now with the 16 millimeter, I did say there's a little bit of a caveat. One of the things that you're going to notice on this guy is that because it's a 16 millimeter, there is a little bit of a bulbous end at the edge of this lens. Essentially what that means though, is that you can't put any screw on filters on it and you can't use screw on adapters in order to get it on a matte box because of the shape of this lens. Now, if you do have a camera that has internal NDs, this doesn't actually make a difference for you. And if you're somebody that doesn't, you actually have to use filters from the rear of the lens. On the back here, you could actually screw on the adapter so you can use these of those coupe filters. It's gonna give you a variety of different filters you can use. You have hard stop NDs, you could also use mist filters, and there's also an anamorphic filter as well. It doesn't take very long to install, but you do have to keep in mind that you have to use a different set of filters specifically for this lens because of this kind of bulbous curvature that goes on the front. Now I'm gonna talk about this later on in a different video, but I also have another super wide DZO lens as well, which doesn't have to follow that, although it's not included in this set. This right here is a 12 millimeter Vespid Prime. Now this still follows that Vespid Prime fashion, it's around the same size, but this is actually a 77 millimeter filter thread and doesn't have that bulbous edge at the end. That way I could put on filters onto this guy. Now this might be a bit of an expansion if you decide that you really like wide angle focal lengths and you wanna go a little bit wider, but it's not included in the set so you don't get the discount, but I just wanna point out that this lens does exist if you're someone who likes wide lenses a lot and you wanna add this to your kit. Now the last lens in this kit is going to be the 35 to 80 Kata zoom lens. And this guy's actually grown on me a little bit. Now it's kind of like a cinema version of the 24 to 70, except it's not a 24 part, although they give you that focal length in this kit. And also instead of being an F 2.8, it's a T 2.9, which essentially are pretty close together anyways. Now it is gonna be a 77 millimeter filter thread, just like the other Vespid Primes and unlike that 60 millimeter. But one thing that I like about this is that you get that DZO look that you get in love from the other cinema lenses, but you just get it in a zoom fashion. Lens isn't as fast, but at the same time, you get the versatility of going from 35 to 80 millimeters. Now, there are two things that I found on the Kata Zoom lens, which is really nice. One of them, which is pretty much across the board on all the lenses, and one that's specific to cinema zoom lenses. For one, you're going to be working with minimal focus breathing when you're working with cinema lenses, at least the higher end of things. Now, focus breathing is one that focal length and that zoom in might happen a little bit, especially when you're changing from your focus from near to far. This might happen on some Sony lenses, but this doesn't necessarily happen on higher end cinema lenses. Now across the board, it doesn't happen as much on these cinema lenses. It's actually fairly well controlled, which is super nice and very welcome. Now something that's specific and especially on higher end cinema zoom lenses is the ability to be par focal. Now par focal basically means that if I zoom in and I zoom out, does it maintain its focus? Other cheaper lenses that have a zoom range don't actually do this. If you zoom in and you zoom out, what ends up happening is you might lose focus here and there. Now, if you're working with an autofocusing lens, it doesn't necessarily make a big difference. However, when you're working on a lens that doesn't have autofocus on it, being able to zoom in and zoom out and still have your focus being sharp is incredibly important, especially when you're working in run and gun situations or you're working on a documentary. You want to make sure that even if you're zooming things in, your focus is going to be maintained, which happens on these Kata zoom lenses. Now, this isn't a small lens. You might still need to have some lens support, which I have used on a couple of different client projects, especially if you're working on a smaller camera, like maybe the Sony FX3 or the Panasonic S5X2. You wanna make sure that because there's so much weight that's on here, something is supporting the end of this lens to make your life a bit easier and to make sure the mount doesn't get ripped off of your camera. Now, I can't necessarily say this video is a review rather than an overview and honestly a soft and not so soft recommendation. Now, at the time of this video, the educational set of the 16, the 25, and that 35 to 80 is a whopping $6,000. Cinema lenses aren't cheap. Except, I'm lying. 
Right now, they actually have an educational discount for this exact set of lenses for almost half off, if not actually a little bit more than half off. Right now, you can get this set of three lenses for $3,000 while using their educational discount, which are gonna be links I'm gonna leave in the description down below. This is a great opportunity if you're someone who is student or staff of an art school or a university in order to get a gigantic discount on your first set of cinema lenses. Now, in these two links, you're going to have to go through a little bit of a process in order to apply and get an email back and find the retailers for you to be able to pick these up at that discount. But I'm also going to say in complete honesty, I don't really know if they have a list of schools that are there. So, I mean, if you have a friend that's in school, you might want to get them to pick these up for you. Or if you're currently in film school or any university, I guess, what's going on right now, you have to find out while going through that link. You can get these lenses for a gigantic discount, which is super nice because having your first set of cinema lenses as good as the DZO, Vespa Primes, and Cata Zoom at half of the price, they're going to be built to last. The build quality is great. I've mentioned that on this channel before. But having all of those features that you get at a cinema lens that used to be way more expensive, you don't necessarily have to worry about that and you get to save a lot of money. Now, again, this is just an overview of this educational set of lenses. And unfortunately, I got to bring these back, except I don't have to bring them back today. Now, if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you leave a comment, you like, you subscribe, do all the things YouTubers ask you to do. And I am gonna leave more videos of the digital lenses in the description down below. So that way you can see what some of them can do. I've used a ton of them before and optically for the most part, they all pretty much look the same. That being said, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.